young people are in distress about all kinds of things in their lives. It's 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 very, um, uh, you know, vulnerable time of the lifespan. One in three children uh, up to the age of 13 already will have experienced a diagnosable mental health disorder. So it's quite a widespread issue. Teaching children how to look after their mental health is really important. When I was about 16, I kind of had went through a really tough time. Just really the pressure of the leaving cert just really got to me and it was really hard to explain to anyone what was going on. It was, um, I was just feeling very anxious. What we're finding across the country is young people are not coping as well with these. There's almost too much to cope with. And when they present for help, they're, they're physically in a very stressed condition. Having butterflies in my stomach for absolutely no reason and not being able to sleep. Um, I stopped eating properly um, and I stopped hanging out with my friends, which for me was a big thing. They don't know what it's all about. They can't tell you, I'm feeling this way because. I think there's a huge stigma about talking about mental health. Um, it's not like a broken leg or it's not like a um, diabetes or anything like that. The people they talk to, it's always somebody that they have the feeling this person gets me and believes in me and is willing to, to, to listen without judging me too much. I was referred to a school psychologist um, just helped me realise that it was perfectly normal to feel the way I was feeling and that I just needed a bit of support to get through that time. My experience with my mental health has made me a stronger person and I'm more willing to ask for help when I need it. And whatever you're feeling, there's a very good reason for what you're feeling and we're going to work that out. We have lots of clients who, through their mental illness, have become homeless. Um, whether it's been that they have had a mood disorder or, um, and haven't been able to sustain a tenancy, or because of their mental illness they've withdrawn from their family. Well, I actually came over here from Scotland, then the drinking started. Um, uh, obviously, depression. Becoming homeless is very stressful. Going through the day-to-day -day, um, existence of not knowing when you're staying that night is very stressful. This can uh, almost kind of bring on um, more severe or make, make their mental illness or their mental health problems more difficult to cope with. It affects you emotionally, physically, mentally, everything. You end up, you have no, no hope. Who's happy with you? walking about the streets for 12 hours and getting into hostels when you don't know people and there's fighting and um, that's where the, the drinking comes in, just to numb the pain. These issues that um, require some stability and the one thing that the homeless population here don't have is stability. I've got brilliant facilities here in Merchants Quay. Um, they've got absolutely everything. <laughs> I mean, they've got dentists, doctors, hairdressing, <laughs> uh, but it's n that's okay. There's loads of day services, but it's beds we need. It's somewhere to put our, our heads, and then you can move on and try and do something else with your life. Obviously, accommodation and access to accommodation can be a limit to what how far we get with clients, but um, we have some clients who, even coming to our service and accessing the service is a positive outcome. I suppose that's what makes us come back to work is that we can see the, the help that we're giving these people and that they are getting positive outcomes. A mental health and an addiction problem when a person has both types of problems. It's known as a dual diagnosis. 85% of people with 
and alcohol addiction also have an underlying mental health issue such as anxiety or depression. It makes sense if you think about it that uh, sometimes people use an addiction as a way of coping with their mental distress if they don't know about more healthy ways of looking after their mental health. My husband had spent years talking to specialists and AA members even and all and, and everything saying there's something there's something else wrong. I do believe he said the word depression a few times. If he had been listened to. If you have a dual diagnosis, you tend to bounce around the services because the mental health services say, well, come back when you're sober, when you've got your alcohol addiction problem sorted. And the addiction treatment systems assume you don't have a mental health disorder. People seem to think that if you drink too much, oh, he's an alcoholic or she's an alcoholic. There's more to it than that. It's the one area of medicine where it's okay to blame the person instead of actually standing back and saying, well, what was going on for that person in their life? What she wanted to know was, do I cry much? Do I spend a lot of time in bed? And we backtracked to when Siobhan was born, and Siobhan is 21 now. We don't have anybody with a clear leadership role to reduce the harm that alcohol abuse causes. And in the meantime, families continue to suffer.